Let's talk about honeybee anatomy. Here's an overview of the key parts that make our honeybees recognizable and unique. The honeybee stinger, unlike a wasp, is barbed and gets stuck in thick, leathery skin like ours. Bees, unlike flies, have four wings that link together during flight. Bees use their wings to fly, communicate, and circulate air throughout the hive. The thorax is the center of the three B segments and is where the wings attach to the body. The compound eyes of honeybees are the two large, easy to see eyes. Then, less obviously, there are oculi at the top of their head. These are three more eyes for a total of five. Bees have antenna with many uses and a tongue called a proboscis. They have visible jaws called mandibles complex little feet called tarsals, and the lower segment known as the abdomen. The corbicula, which serves as a bee purse for carrying collective goods. And we can take a closer look at some of the more important bee parts in the rest of this. Honeybees have five eyes. They see an ultraviolet and the, they have the fastest color vision, which helps them see individual flowers regardless of size, wind, etc. They have a great ability to judge distance and similarly to flies, they actually see better when in flight. The three oculi on the top of the head have single lenses in contrast to their compound eye, which consists of thousands of lenses and these help to orient them from up, from down, as well as where the bee is geographically, making it easier for them to navigate to and from home when foraging. Bees have complicated antenna. Bees use their antenna as receptors for scent and touch. They can sense the pheromones being distributed throughout the hive, as well as the vibrations used for communications. The antenna consists of three parts the scape at the base, the pedicel, and the flagellum. The bee's mandibles are used for chewing, molding, or moving wax around the hive. They'll carry dead bees out with their mandibles from inside the hives. They'll remove hive debris. They'll fight. They can carve pieces of bee bread out from storage inside the hive to feed, cons and to feed larva or consume. They'll groom with their mandibles, and they'll use them to collect and use propolis. The bee's straw-like tongue is used for sucking liquids and also for tasting. The proboscis is composed of several different parts. There's an outer tube used for consuming in large quantities of liquid, such as water or honey. For example, honeybees may vacuum up large amounts of honey when they are robbing another hive or when they're preparing to swarm. Then a smaller tube inside the larger one has taste receptors and brushy hairs that help scoop up smaller quantities of liquid like nectar within the flowers. Honeybees will exchange food between each other in a process called trophallaxis. And during this process, pheromones are spread throughout the hive in an additional form of communication. Bees have two wings on each side of their body, which are held together with comb-like teeth called hamuli. These teeth allow the two wings to act as one large surface and help the bee create greater lift when flying. Bees have two sets of wings, one larger outer set and one smaller inner set. The wings themselves are composed of three layers, a transparent membrane on top, and bottom supported by a network of veins that carry hemolyph or bee blood, nerves and breathing tubes throughout the wings as well to provide structural support. Despite their durability, honeybee wings are only capable of a finite number of flight miles with estimates of this upper boundary being something like 500 miles. Close observation of older bees in the colony will often reveal wings that are tattered around the edges or torn. Honeybees have open ports on the integument that ultimately connect with the internal tissues, appendages, and organs. These holes, called spiracles, allow oxygen to move directly into the insect's body. Most productive and young working honeybees, workers have four pairs of special wax secreting glands on the undersides of their abdomens. 
From these glands, they secrete liquefied wax, which hardens into thin scales when exposed to the air. As the worker bee ages, these glands atrophy, and the task of making wax is left to younger bees. Worker bees have a perfect little pocket on their hind legs to pack the pollen into while they're out foraging so that they can bring it back to the hive. This is called a pollen basket or corbicula. They'll use this purse for pollen, propolis, and even collecting wax to bring back to the hive. The proventriculus controls the flow of honey into the bee's actual stomach. The ventriculus also separates the pollen into specialized pouches and allows that pollen to be passed through the midgut and fully digested. Nurse bees have a gland to turn pollen protein into a rich substance called royal jelly. Then this royal jelly is regurgitated directly into the cells for the developing larva to consume. The royal jelly is diluted once the bees begin to form and it goes from a pure royal jelly into a honey and pollen mixture. The queen bee is the only exception that lives on royal jelly throughout her development. This is what allows her to develop into a fully fertile version of a female worker bee. The honey bee has a stinger and venom sac that is used for communicating danger and attacking predators. In the worker bee, the stinger is barbed and will get stuck in thick skin, meaning they can only sting humans once. The queen bee has a smooth stinger, more similar to a wasp, and can technically sting more than once, but it's not all that common for a queen bee to sting. Honey bee anatomy is certainly more complicated than this introduction and overview. So here's a few resources for continuing to learn about bee biology and anatomy and how honey bees work from the inside out. Bee Informed Partnership has a great website with tons of resources. And Dr. Dewey Karen's book is one of my absolute favorites. So check out Bee Biology and Beekeeping. And then also the American Bee Journal, which constantly teaches us more and is keeping an eye open for new science and discoveries about our fascinating bees. As always, thanks for learning with us and please don't forget to connect with us as we continue to share and learn about honeybees across all of our platforms.